Hello everyone, uh, this is Angel Bernice at projectdirectors.org expert talk. Today we're going to meet with Danny Bauer about project planning. Let me take this time to introduce him to you. He's the president of IPMA in Belgium, project program and maturity expert, Prince2 accredited trainer, MSP practitioner, CMMI certified trainer and coach. Hi Danny, how are you doing? Hi Angel, thank you. Uh for inviting me for this interview. I'm doing fine right now. How are you? Very well, thanks. It's a real pleasure having you with us on Expert Talk. Thank you. Uh, my first question for you, Danny, is why is it so difficult planning a project? Yeah, well, um, first we must understand that uh, when we talk about planning, uh, we talk about a plan, and a plan is more than just creating uh, a can chart with some activities. A plan should contain, amongst others, um, the products that should be created uh, and, and their product descriptions. Um, amongst others, there are also uh, project plan and other plans, like we have to create a risk uh, management plan, a communication management plan, quality management plan, and so on. Uh, they should also uh, be um, the activities to create the products. Uh, the estimates uh, needed uh, to, uh, to create uh, those products, the durations, um, uh, the people uh, that we need, uh, that leads to a capacity plan uh, so that we can finally come to the schedule. Uh, the schedule is what we, we often uh, introduce like a, a can shot. But, okay, let's talk about the planning and why is it so difficult. Well. We need to realize that uh, planning is not an exact science. Uh, there are so many uh, internal or external factors that can influence the project uh, we are working on. Something like you're working on a project for several months and then you discover, well, something has changed uh, on, on the law side, uh, which affects your project. So you need to make some adaptations to it, impacts your schedule your planning. Um, we all know about the, the fact that customers rarely change their minds, they come with change requests, impacts our planning. Or even when your company uh, shifts their priorities um, for your projects and they put a higher priority on other projects and well, you, lose, you might lose uh, your resources because of uh, what uh, uh, their decision was. Uh, or even, uh, well, it's possible that your company is taken over by another organization and yes, they have other priorities. All things that uh, can influence your projects. Um, now, furthermore, um, I don't know if you people uh, have ever, ever read or heard about the Standish Report. Uh, that's, uh, Standish is an American organization um, that every two years has a um, uh, uh, research about the, the failure and uh, the success of projects. Um, and, and what they say, well, main reasons for project failure are, well, incomplete requirements at the start of the project or that the requirements are changing during the project. Other things are the expectations towards planning. They're unrealistic. A uh, customer says, well, I need to have it within two months. Uh, you agree with that, but you realize it's un, uh, undoable. Uh, also, stakeholders are important. Uh, if they are not involved in the project, uh, it's difficult to, to get requirements, and, and, and that are uh, uh, important uh, inputs for, uh, for your planning. Um, another thing is that uh, there is also complexity uh, within projects, which makes it hard to identify uh, every element that you need, uh, the, the requirements, I mean, for your project. Um, and last but not least, why it's uh, um, difficult to, to have a correct uh, planning, well, people try to plan the whole project uh, at once in the beginning of the, the project and that's not always possible because at the beginning of a project you do not have enough uh, information uh, and even so if you have uh, 
uh, sufficient information. During the project, things can change. So to me, uh, planning the whole project uh, from the start, uh, within the little details, uh, it's a waste of time. Uh, a project that runs over one year, that can happen so much uh, into that uh, time. So it's better to uh, divide your project into small uh, stages. And those stages are better uh, manageable. So that was uh, a little bit why I think that uh, it's so hard to do the planning. Uh, a little bit of, of pieces everywhere. OK, OK, it's been very, very interesting. And uh, my next question is, uh, what inputs are needed to plan a project? Yeah, uh, because I state that um, the, the project that we plan is, is more than, than just the activities in, in a Gantt chart. We need to start from the requirements. The requirements, we need them from the stakeholders, from the customers, and the requirements would uh, make up the scope of the project. When we have the scope of the project, we can start with identifying products uh, that we need to create. Um, but next to that, we also need the other management products, like risk, I mentioned it before, like quality products, communication products, uh, uh, products that uh, we need for our change management. And this, um, I mean, the the organizational change management and not the, the changes within a project uh, and so on. Uh, we need a lot of input from, uh, from a lot of places within the, the project to make sure that we can do uh, our project in, in a common sense. We first must uh, think before we do. And that, that's a very, very important uh, uh, quote in, in project management, first think, then do. And, and that's why we need to, to have all those things. Okay, uh, sounds sounds good. Um, then we have the, the inputs. What do you think is the best way for planning our project? Yeah. Well, when starting the planning uh, of a project, I especially like the the planning approach that Prince Two uh, has. Uh, Within uh, the, the uh, planning approach, uh, they also talk about product-based planning technique. And, and I use that technique uh, all the time. So it starts with gathering the requirements. What, are, what is the scope of the project? So that we can have an idea uh, which, is the, which will be the final product. And from there on, uh, first on, um, on a higher level, uh, from a project level, uh, I, I will do. I do several steps, um, and the high-level project plan. Well, you must consider it more as as a, a kind of milestone plan. We do not have uh, every information uh, at the moment, but we do have uh, kind of several building blocks uh, to, to start from. So the first thing I do is from the final product, what we have to deliver. Uh, uh, we're going to, to identify uh, the sub-products that needs to be created. All the, the little products uh, starting to uh, develop and make up the final product. For this, like I mentioned before, I, I use the, the product-based uh, planning technique by first creating the product-based uh, uh, product structure. Um, uh, sorry, product breakdown structure. Uh, it's, well, it, it's like the work breakdown structure, but the work breakdown structure is uh, focused on activities while the product based breakdown structure is focused on products. When we have those products, I put them in the product flow diagram. I put them in a sequence. Uh, and then I uh, start with um, thinking about the stages. How am I going to divide my project, at least if it's taking a longer time, into uh, smaller parts about uh, um, in which stages. Next to this, when I have this, I identify the activities needed to create these products and dependencies. Uh, so I do not start with thinking about the activities. No, I start with thinking about the products. And in this step, I think about the activities um, which are needed to create those products. 
Next step is, of course, when I have the activities, I need to know uh, which skills I, I uh, need for that, which competences uh, people need to be able to perform these activities. Uh, then I will estimate the time uh, needed to perform the, the activities. I say I estimate, that's not completely true. I ask the, the people, uh, the experts, to help me with the estimation. I do not know uh, exactly how much time they need for that. Uh, and when we have those estimates, uh, I can create the product schedule. This is on high level product schedule. Uh, the next step is, well, then I start with planning a stage. I'm approaching my, my first stage. I take um, the, the products I identified on my project plan uh, during the first stage, and I start over again. The same what I mentioned before, uh, that product, uh, are there sub-products that I need to create? I dig deeper into the details of that. Again, with using the product breakdown structure and put it in the product flow diagram. I identify additional activities and dependencies, uh, probably the additional skills, again, estimating the time for those activities. Um, and then the next step, when I know it, uh, well, then I start to, to negotiate uh, with team managers uh, for the skills I need. And I want them committed to my project. Uh, when I've done that, then I am going to create uh, a stage schedule and take into account the resources I have. So probably I will have to do some resource leveling uh, depending on uh, how much time they are available uh, and so on. Uh, for this, I, I start using the, the president's diagram method so I can uh, uh, determine my critical path, uh, my uh, longest uh, uh, path during the, the, uh, the creation of the products, and I can create uh, my can uh, shot. And that's I do again for every stage. So the steps are each time the same, but every time more and more in detail. So at this point of time, I have uh, sufficient information. Uh, for uh, as input for my, my project budget, for my stage budget. Okay, it's good. Yeah, very, very good uh, explanation of how Thank the you. process. Yeah. Um, well, the next question uh, is um, how do we know that we have finished uh, planning our project? Yeah. Well, actually, the only time uh, you are aware or you know that your planning is, is uh, finished and your planning is correct is actually when the project is finished. Because you, there are so many factors, like I explained before, you never know when your, uh, uh, when your planning is, is correct. So it's constantly updating the planning, looking at it, uh, and, and, and making sure that um, what you're doing or what the people uh, are doing right now uh, that you follow that up because that's that's important you create a planning of course you think well people uh, will follow it but you need to make sure you need to follow them up and from the moment that you see uh, a deviation from your planning well you cannot hesitate to do anything you need to take action upon that you need to know why uh, is there a difference between uh, what is in the planning and how the people are performing? Uh, especially, you need to follow uh, all the, the activities, so all the products that are on the critical path. But to me, well, the first time I really know when my uh, planning is successful is at the end of the project. Hmm. Okay, and that's the, the last question. Uh, how do we know that we did successfully the project planning? Sorry, that was your previous. Uh... I repeat the Sorry, question. It was... Yes, uh, it was uh, how do we know that we did successfully? We planned successfully mm -hmm. the project. Yes. Well, that's that's. I, I maybe I misunderstood your previous question, but I thought that was your previous question. How do we know when we plan a project successful? And uh, that's why I say I never, we never know when it's uh, successful. 
mm -hmm. um, because it's, it's it's a lot of uh, changes uh, uh, and influences during the project. So you you know uh, by the end of the project when it's uh, it has been successful by following it up. Okay. Um, are there any final tips or advice you would give to our project directors? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, maybe I can say say one thing. Yeah? Um, when we're talking about planning, well, a PM uh, assumes that requirements will not change, and thus, uh, that also the scope will not change. Uh, he also thinks that uh, activities are uh, just just about planning uh, again shot and mostly they like, ignore uncertainties even doesn't see assumptions as a possible risk you know. um, but a good PM uh, should actually be aware that requirements and scope will constantly change in the project and that you need to take upon action upon that and the plans that he starts from products and not activities like in the past. A lot of people think, oh, we have a project, I have to create a planning, uh, I have to plan activities. No, we have to plan products and afterwards we will uh, attach activities to that. Um, a good PM also knows that the plan is more than just a game chart. It's a lot of things that you need to plan before you can start to schedule. And a good PM uh, should know that uh, planning is, is uh, an interactive activity. You do not do it once, but you do it constantly and regularly at the end of, of each stage. Well, that's something that I would like to, to give uh, uh, as advice to those uh, project directors. Okay, uh, we have finished. Uh, thank you, Danny, for sharing your expertise in projectdirectors.org. You're welcome. It's been very interesting and I hope it will be very useful for anyone thinking about planning a, a project. No? Uh, thank you so much again. Uh, see you soon, Danny. And okay, bye see bye. you. Bye. Bye.